Mark Sargent, the self-proclaimed king of the Flat Earth movement, has put out a challenge. He will quit his channel when a Glober provides a picture of the curve of the Earth complete with a ruler against it. MC Toon has provided these pictures and Mark Sargent reacted like this. A single person, this is how wild this happened, a single person emailed me and they said, Oh, hey, I've got some photographs of an airplane. Because you said, if you, if anyone sends you actual stuff with a legitimate curvature from an airplane that, uh, and, and it still looks like a, like it's got curvature, I'll, I'll quit flat earth. It's like, yeah, okay. No one sent me, sent me anything. So this guy sends me something. First one, literally. Eight years. First one. And I this know guy. he only sent it because this he guy. heard on an interview recently. This so guy. I send him back the, uh, the Neil deGrasse Tyson video. Where, uh, you he didn't send me anything back. I posted it years ago. Where Neil deGrasse Tyson, in front of the students, says that uh, the Felix Bumgardner jump... By the way, any trolls out there, tell me, is the Red Bull jump legit or not? Uh, that's the first question you got to ask yourself. <laughs> so, he, and, he and Neil comes nothing. on and he says the Red got Bull jump is flirt. scientifically dishonest. Because at 130,000 feet, you absolutely positively cannot see the curvature of the Earth. It's the pinnacle of cowardliness to hide behind the back of your enemy. And it's the pinnacle of stupidity if that enemy is wrong. In my video, Flat Earth Nonsense 25, How much curvature should we see? I calculated the amount of curvature we should see at different heights. That is, I calculated the viewing angle of the sagitta of the curve. That is, in layman's terms, the height of the bulge in the horizon. Now that the discussion is beginning to focus on showing how much bulge we are seeing in reality, I realized that the viewing angle of that bulge isn't going to help you very much. You can't measure it on a picture. So I expanded the spreadsheet in which I made my calculations and now you can get the ratio between the width of the picture and the height of the bulge. One of the pictures MC Toon showed was this one. The picture was taken by Albert W. Stevens in 1936 at a height of 27,395 feet or around 22 kilometers. I measured the width of the picture on my screen at 49.8 centimeters and the height of the bulge at that width at around 0.32 centimeters. The ratio between the bulge and the width therefore is 0.0064. Assuming a normal viewing angle of the camera of 35 degrees and an observer height of 22 kilometers, the calculated ratio between the bulge and the width is 0.00638. The picture is within 0.3% of the predicted bulge, so it's perfectly consistent with the spherical Earth. But how about Neil deGrasse Tyson's remark that you wouldn't be able to see the curvature of the Earth from 130,000 feet, that is the height of the Baumgartner jump? Neil deGrasse Tyson said this. Felix Baumgartner, uh, he would have been about two millimeters above the surface of this globe. That's his edge of space jump. Now, so, you know, I, I don't, it's fine, he wants to, I don't have a problem if he does it, but the, the honesty of it would greatly diminish what I think people thought he was actually doing. And not only that, they made sure to photograph him standing there with a really wide angle lens, which curves horizontal lines. Right. So in the photo, you see this curvature of Earth's surface, and he said, wow, he's in space, look at that. No, he's not. At that height, you don't see. You don't see the curvature of the Earth! All flat earthers cite him ad nauseum and claim that therefore all pictures showing the curvature of the Earth are fake or non-existent. Well, as I demonstrated in my calculations, the ratio between the bulge and the viewing width is very small. Even at that height of 130,000 feet or 39.6 kilometers, it's around 0.0085 and at the average flying height of an airplane of 11 kilometers it's even less 0.0045 so neil degrasse tyson was right you wouldn't be able to see that is 
with the naked eye this very small amount of curvature. However, you would be able to measure it from a photograph as I demonstrated with the picture from 1936. So Neil deGrasse Tyson was right, but he was also wrong. You cannot see it, but you can measure it for sure. Sargent asks at which altitude you cannot see the curvature anymore. As I said, you will never see the curvature with your naked eye unless you're in space. However, you can measure the curvature on a photograph as long as you use an ordinary lens and as long as you can enlarge the picture to a reasonable length. All of this doesn't change the weakness of the argument by Mark Sargent. He seems to think that he can reason away the sheer existence of photographs showing the curvature of the Earth by saying that Neil deGrasse Tyson has said that you wouldn't be able to see the curve from a certain height. That's not only a, an appealing to authority fallacy, it is also an argument from adverse consequences fallacy. In layman's terms, Mark Sargent is dead wrong and he knows it, because if he would acknowledge the existence of those pictures, he would quick the flat earth movement. He would lose the only thing he has in his life, his notoriety. <laughs>